How's it going folks? It's Rob here. I've had a couple of people PM me and ask about growing turmeric, even though our season's pretty much all winding down here. Um, folks in North America, your season's just starting, and even folks in tropical Australia, you guys can still plant it out too. So thought I'd post a little bit of a clip just explaining how we do it here, and might give you a couple of ideas for you folks in the cooler areas as well. Now, turmeric, or Kakuma longa, actually comes from the southwest area of India, which is a tropical climate. Um, here we're in the subtropics in southeast Queensland, Australia, and it does really well, as it does in zone 9 and above in North America, from what I've heard. Uh, now, you folks Folks in Europe, I don't really have a lot of growing information for you, but I'd take it you pretty much will follow the um, the cool climate growing tips. Um, that'd probably help you out a fair bit. Here in Australia, um, around the coastline down south, you can pretty much will get away with growing it with a little bit of extra care. Same for you folks down to zone 7B as well. Um, you just need to baby it along a bit. So I'll give you a couple of pointers on that in a minute. Now turmeric is a leafy green plant that grows from rhizomes, these little fellows here, into a plant that's about a metre tall or three foot tall. Um, some varieties, like the one in the black barrel behind me here, actually throw a flower. Now the flower from this variety has white bracts and around the Top, it has some beautiful little pink highlights and I think they look absolutely spectacular probably make um, a very good ornamental plant actually as a bit of a border um, just flowering through summer so it might be something we look into in the future the the root which is what we're after the rhizome um, it sort of forms in a hand formation in the center you have a mother now it's all those fingers actually come from the central mother and some of those fingers again will branch off and form other mothers and that's how basically the clump grows just to give you a look at these guys here um, that's where you'll get your new leafy growth you can also um, get sprouts come out of these little nodes that are along the side growing out the side of the turmeric and as you can see this one here sprouted as well so these guys here are pretty much all right to go out into the ground now even though it's the wrong time of year I will be planting them out just to see how they go because I'd like to have a crack um, but when you buy your turmeric normally from the shop either to eat or to plant it comes in the dormant form which is this one here it's um this is pretty much more right to um, pop in some soil and plant it will take a little bit longer obviously to sprout than these guys but yeah this is quite viable turmeric as well there's a lot of energy stored up in the little rhizome sourcing um, planting material is pretty easy you can get bits and pieces like this from seed and plant suppliers and you can get younger fresher bits and pieces from um, stores the Asian grocers around here normally have a few little sections of the whole route and also supermarkets as well some of the larger ones will stock it if you are a bit concerned though that that, um, they may be spray, um, sprayed with some growth inhibitors. Might be an idea to check out the organic section or go to an organic market and buy your root sections from there because you can pretty much all guarantee if they're true organic they won't have any of those inhibitors sprayed on them. These are the two turmeric varieties that we grow here. The yellow one we were told was a madras and we picked it up at a local organic buyers co-op and the orange variety we bought from a seed vendor probably about four or five years ago now. The best time to plant these guys out is when the soil starts to warm up in the last chance of any frost has passed they are very frost sensitive so a good idea to get a bit of a jump start on the season um, no matter what your climate is is to pop these guys into some soil inside uh, just where it's a little bit warmer and hopefully by the time it's you know right to plant them out you'll have a little bit of a green foliage on there a bit of a shoot in the past uh, in our back walkway I've actually sat these guys in trays of water and I've had started them off that way um, now we've overwintered them in the ground we don't worry about that so much but yeah the, the tray with water method does work as well I find the patches that do the best here for us are the ones that are in partial shade um, a bit of shade cover over the top or a bit of shade from the mango tree here um, they tend to do really well We've, I've got a barrel out the front of the greenhouse here and it's got a bit of sun damage to the leaves fully exposed so uh, partial shade for us if you're in a cooler climate though with mild attempts during summer um, by all means plant them out in full sun they'll really love you for it it's a relatively heavy feeder so to prepare the soil I like to throw in some compost and some worm castings if I've got some laying around also to a bit of aged um, semi decomposed horse manure doesn't hurt either it's a bit of food for the worms compost worms in the bed but if you don't have any of that um, you can do what we did when we first started off um, I found they did really well on some pelletized organic chook manure fertilizer and also to a bit of a handful of blood and bone in there and they did really well the first couple of years when we used that before we were composting when I plant them out I like to put 
put them down roughly round about seven and a half to ten centimeters deep with the little nodes and any shoots that are formed pointing up um, that just you know helps them find the Sun a lot easier for spacing in the beds I put them apart roughly around about 30 centimeters or a foot in the barrel like the barrel behind me here I think I planted about four or five in that barrel and yeah it's just totally taken over the whole thing uh, I have fed it up uh, during the season um, like all our turmerics and gingers with a top dress of compost and also given it a very basic compost tea compost mixed in water and poured on just to stretch it out and also to some um, seaweed um, liquid fertilizer as well and I found in the barrels the plants really appreciate it but in the beds you know just a bit of compost and a bit of water and they're happy for sprouting time I found it can be as short as three to four weeks depending on how advanced your little um, rhizome is before you pop it in anywhere up to I think our longest was roughly about six weeks so thanks to Lols the farm on Instagram for asking that question because I actually forgot to include it in the clip so um, don't don't worry if you don't see them um, sprout in a week or two give them a little bit longer keep the soil all around the moist not soaking wet um, keep it moist and in a warm position and hopefully you should have some shoots with the moisture requirements they they are a fairly thirsty plant but they don't like the rhizome um, sitting in a lot of water we've found that they've actually done really well in these wicking beds because the rhizomes up towards the surface and the roots can go down to the moister layers closer to the reservoir uh, we've got some fantastic yields growing in this wicking system so pretty sold on it myself a few folks who want to have a crack at growing turmeric or the other gingers in cooler climates um, it might pay for you to start some off indoors probably in a 20 to 30 centimeter pot an 8 to 12 inch pot just with some really nice compost um, rich soil um, give it keep the soil moist but not wet and pop it in a warm position hopefully by the time your frost has passed and um, the ground has started to warm up a bit um, you can you know have a little bit of a green growth on the on your plant and it's right to go if I was in a cool climate and I was going to plant these guys outside directly I'd probably use a 30 to 60 centimeter pot and I'd only bury them roughly around about 30 mil or an inch and a quarter deep so they're nice and close to the warm surface of the soil probably help them sprout a lot faster being a tropical plant I'd put them in a position that got the majority of your summer Sun during the day so for in the folks in the northern hemisphere that's in a southerly facing position and for us folks down here in the southern hemisphere in a northerly facing position now a few other um, things you could do is if you're growing in containers um, grow them in a black container what that will do is that will absorb more sunlight keep the roots um, warmer and hopefully help your plant along another idea is to think about the little microclimates that you can create if you can grow them um, in that north or southern depending where you are facing position against a wall a solid wall like a brick wall or even a retaining wall um, what that will do is that will act as a heat bank absorb heat during the day and radiate it out in the early evening and hopefully into the evening itself and that will just help keep the plants warm um, any little bit of extra heat in these cooler climates will help Turmeric does require a long growing season, pretty much well nine to ten months. Um, obviously, you folks in cooler regions that don't get long summers, um, you know your plants will die back early. For us here, I found around about June, July, they start to die back, depending on their position in the yard. Of course, more sheltered ones will die back a bit sooner. That's when it's pretty much all time to harvest them uh, if you want to pull them from the ground. With ours here, I tend to overwinter them, but I will be harvesting uh, the clump from the barrel here because it's been in there a few years really does need to come out new soil start them off again and also to the plant in the aquaponics you can grow them in aquaponics and also hydroponics um, I found they've done really well this plant here though really does need to come out because it's shading out the ones behind it so these two ones will be harvested the rest of the patches we've got on the go they'll be staying in the ground and we'll just bandicoot out or, or harvest rhizomes as we need it for different meals if you're in a cooler region though I do think it is a good idea to um, mulch them if you're growing them in the ground uh, maybe nip off a couple of fingers as a bit of an insurance policy and store them inside a few folks who get a hard freeze uh, and the ground freezes over I do think you need to harvest all your rhizome you can either process it and preserve it for later or another idea is you could maybe get a large box and container depending on how large your harvest is filled with dry sand um, or sawdust or cocoa coir um, the fine cocoa peat and make sure it's dry bury the rhizomes in there and store it in a cool dark 
dark, dry area in the house. For you folks who are in a cooler area but do have central heating and the like and the house stays warm all through winter, um, you know, you might even be able to get away with growing some in a small pot as a house plant. Um, not something we do here, but, um, you know, it was a bit of an idea for you folks who do have that opportunity. So I hope this has been a helpful clip for you folks who are wondering how to uh, make a starter growing your own turmeric, especially you folks in the cooler region. You can have a crack. You may not get a bumper harvest, but, you know, at least you'll be able to grow some of your own spices. Uh, if you found the clip useful, feel free to share it online as well. And also, too, first time you've seen one of our clips, hit that subscribe button and you'll get an email if you check a little box every time I upload a clip to um, YouTube and you can come along and see what's going on in our little backyard farm. There's also a couple of playlists there uh, just on how we plant different bits and pieces around the place and also too um, how we harvest them and how we use them once they're harvested. So I do hope everyone is well and happy and that you have enjoyed the clip and I'll catch you next week for another one, hopefully an aquaponics one coming up. So see you then folks. Cheers.